everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be mixing and matching some of Spellbinders Club kits for April. This month's theme is sewing. Let's start off by showing you some of these club kits. I have the clear stamp and die of the month club kit first. It's called Happy Stitching, and most of them are sentiments, so this is a great one to mix and match all of your clubs with. And then it has the coordinating dies. And you can buy this club kit with just the stamps if you prefer. Next, I'm going to show you the Glimmer Club. And this one is called So Amazing. They always come with a roll of foil. I got a pretty turquoise roll of foil. And then this one has a lot of different plates to it. These first few plates, and there are six of these, they have different stitching lines on them. These are almost six inches in length, which means you can use them horizontally or vertically on your cards. And then you get a banner die and some really cute sentiments. They say, happy stitching, you are so amazing, so thankful and stitched with love. Next, I have the stencil of the month. I've been really enjoying this club since it came out in December of 2023. This one has five layers to it. And this will create some skeins of embroidery floss. So it's super cute. Here's a skein of yellow embroidery floss just to give you an idea of what they're going to create. And this set of stencils is called Rainbow Floss Background. Last, I have the 3D embossing folder of the month. And this one is called One Stitch at a Time. And as you can see, it's filled with needles and threads. OK, so let's get started on card number one. I'm going to start with the Glimmer of the Month Club. And again, this one is called So Amazing. I want to use all six of these Glimmer plates that have the stitching on them, but I want to leave enough room in between each plate so that I can cut out these strips. I'm putting them face down across an A2 size panel, and then I'm going to use some tape to keep these aligned. I started out using the mint tape, but it just wasn't strong enough. So I'm going to be using Spellbinder's yellow tape. And I'll put three strips across these. I will trim it off at the edges. And then I'm going to use a little bit of anti-static powder in between the plates, just so the tape isn't sticky and it will come off the paper easier. I have to kind of pour my powder onto a piece of scrap paper. It doesn't flow very well through the brush. It's good stuff, but it just doesn't flow. I'm going to glimmer these up on many different colors of cardstock as well as foils. And I'm first using Portobello. It's kind of like a craft cardstock and some copper foil. When the timer button stops blinking, I will take it off camera and run it through my Platinum 6. And here is the reveal. Isn't that pretty? The copper on the craft cardstock. And here's a montage of all of the different foils and cardstocks that I used. It was just easy to have them all attached like that so I could just keep foiling. Here's pr a pretty navy with some navy foil. Love that tone on tone. Some of the plates did shift a little bit because I didn't tape the paper down this time. Sometimes it's just easy just to put the foil and the paper and then the plates on top <laughs> and see what happens. But most of them worked out just beautifully like this one. I use some gold foil there. And now to cut these out, I'm using my postage edge slimline dies and the very smallest die has some cute and it looks like stitch marks around it as well but it's just the right size to cut out these strips. Some of them I will cut out with this die and then some I'm just going to cut out with my paper trimmer. But let's put this card together. I'm adhering a piece of score tape onto some cardstock. Kind of rub that in and then I can peel off the release paper. And this will make it really easy to attach my strips of paper. You could also use glue or dot liner, whatever you'd like. I had forgotten that I had the score tape in my stash, so I wanted to use it up. I'm being very careful to align them just perfectly so there's no gaps. 
And I'm just going to go right across this cardstock. All of my cards today, in one way or another, involve stripes. I had a blast with this collection, and I think part of it is because I am a sewer. I love to sew. I don't do it often enough, but I do love to pull out my sewing machine once in a while to create gifts or to hem jeans for my kids. I foiled all of the sentiments onto another piece of portobello cardstock and copper foil. And then I can cut these out using the banner die that was included in this kit. I'm putting some tape runner on the back of my striped panel that I created. And I'm going to attach this to another piece of the portobello cardstock. And this is going to be a five and a half by four and a quarter inch card. All of my cards today are going to be that size, just the regular A2 size. And then I'll cut off the excess. I go kind of slow so that I don't cut into my cardstock. And this is kind of at an angle, as you can see. And then I'm going to add some tape runner behind this panel and attach it to my white card base. I cut out another strip of the Portobello cardstock using the postage edge slimline die because I needed to cover up the stitching in the middle so that I could have a clear place to put my sentiment. I'm stamping out the happy sentiment first onto a piece of the purple cardstock. I'll use the really cute coordinating die for this to cut it out. And I'm so sorry if you hear background noise going on in this video. They're doing road work right on the road in front of my house, and I think it's going to be that way for a few days. Okay, so here is the happy sentiment. I'm going to put that in front of the Til Topaz cardstock. And then here is the blank strip of paper that I'm going to cover up the stitching in the middle. It was just a little too busy there for my sentiment and it made it kind of hard to read. So I'll glue down the happy flat. And then the sentiment I chose to put under that says happy stitching. And I'm just going to glue this down flat as well. I'll kind of tuck it under the happy sentiment. The last thing I did to this card was add a few gems. And here it is all done. I just love how that catches the light. It's such a fun card. And I really loved pulling out multiple colors of the foil to use on this card. For card number two, I'm going to be using the 3D embossing folder, as well as a bunch of the leftover strips of paper that I cut out. For this card, I'm using the ones that I cut out just with my paper trimmer, so they don't have the stitch or the dotted detail around them. So these are a little bit thinner, and I'm just going to start adhering them down across this panel. I'll speed this up. It's kind of a fun process to do and a fun process to watch. I'm not going to take it all the way up to the top of the cardstock because I'm going to be using the Cosmic Blue cardstock and the 3D embossing folder for the top half of this card. I have a lot of these glimmered stripes left over, so I could make up a bunch more cards. But let me flip this over and trim off the overhang. Again, with my long, sharp scissors from Spellbinders, there's been a lot of interest in these scissors lately. Mine are green because they are an older pair. I think the new ones come in a gray. They're the same brand, and they are fabulous. I love these scissors. So I did decide to cut off the top of this cardstock. That way I can just glue this glimmered portion onto the front of the Cosmic Blue cardstock after I 3D emboss it. So I'm using a baby wipe to wet down this panel. It'll just prevent cracking when I run it through my Platinum 6. I'm not going to emboss the whole panel just half of it. 
So I'm trying to get it really straight so that I can glue my stripes down after this has been embossed. And here it is. It looks so cute, embossed with these needles and the threads. And then I'll simply add some more tape runner behind this panel and attach it to the cosmic blue cardstock. For my sentiment, I'm going to dip into the clear stamp of the month. And the sentiment is so cute. It has a coordinating die as well, but it says stitched just for you. And then it has little stitching across the bottom as well as a needle and thread. I didn't know what color I wanted to use for my sentiment, so I, I stamped it out twice. First on a piece of portobello cardstock, and second on this waterfall cardstock. The ink I'm using is called VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, which is a great ink if you just want to stamp it out with a block and not pull out your stamp positioner, because it's nice and thick. And it stamps out perfectly almost every time. I love the shape of those sentiments. They're so cute. Now let's attach the main panel onto the card base. I'm using lots of tape runner because this is such a heavy panel. And then I can attach the sentiment. Here's the portobello and here is the waterfall. I think I prefer the waterfall. It just adds a little more color to this. But I'm going to attach it with some small foam squares. You could also add dimension to your sentiment with some fun foam using the coordinating die and just cutting out a piece of fun foam or just several pieces of cardstock. But I find the foam squares just add some quick dimension to your cards. I added a few smooth gold discs around the sentiment, and here is a close-up look at the card. There's so much fun texture and shine to this card. For my next card, I'm going to be focusing on the clear stamp and die of the Month Club, and in particular, this cute little stitched heart. The cardstock I'm using is called Alabaster, and it measures five and a half by one inch. And I'm just going to eyeball this. You could measure it out. I want to fit five hearts on this strip of paper. So I'm stamping out the top heart first and then the bottom heart. And then I'll kind of eyeball where the heart will go in the middle. This just helps me to evenly stamp them out or at least as evenly as I can without measuring. So here's the one in the middle. And I'm using some new positively saturated inks. They're new-ish. I think they were released last December from Simon Says Stamp. They're beautiful deep red colors. The lightest is Punch, and then the midtone is Sangria, and the last one is Cabernet. After I stamped the middle heart, the two in between were pretty easy to eyeball. And here is my cute little strip of paper. This again will be a fun striped card, but in a different way from the other three. These are going to be vertical stripes this time. I'll attach these right to the card base this time. I'll start with my hearts. Next, I have a piece of alabaster cardstock that I used the same inks just to create a gradient of color. And then I'm going to use more of my glimmered stripes. I'll use this red piece first. And I got a little bit of the tape runner over the edge, so I'm just kind of tucking it back in place. I don't want any of the white cardstock to show through. I'm making sure to butt it up right against my previous stripe. And now for the pink one. These are such narrow strips of paper. I kind of went over the edge on this one. I'll just tuck it back into place. And then my last strip is another piece of alabaster cardstock. And this one's just a plain piece of cardstock. And then I'm going to add even one more stripe, albeit a thin one, 
using some cotton twine. I had this in my stash for a while and it fit the red tone of the card. So I'll use my all-in-one tool to pierce a hole at the top. And then I'm going to, well, let me flip it over and just make sure the hole is big enough for the twine. And then I'll use my all-in-one tool again, just to kind of push it through the hole. And you'll be able to see this, of course, on the inside of the card, but I think it looks really cute. Let me just pull this through. I'll tie a knot to secure this, and then a bow. And now I'll glue down the sentiments. I used the sentiment that says hi, along with its coordinating die. And under that, I use the sentiment that says, take it one stitch at a time. And I use the coordinating die for that as well. And I popped that up with some foam. And here's a close up look at the card. I used some more of the gold smooth discs on this. On the inside, I used the sentiment that says, thinking of you with each stitch, as well as the handmade sentiment on the back of the card. And I've stamped those out on alabaster cardstock and glued those in place. And now for my favorite card of the set, which is going to involve the stencils. So with these stencils, you want to make sure that all of the numbers are right the right way up. If you have it the wrong way or you're using it upside down or backwards, it might not align perfectly. So I'm starting with stencil number one, and I'm taping that over a piece of fog cardstock, which is a really pale gray. I'm using more of the positively saturated inks. I'll start with the light pink ink. I'm going in rainbow order minus the red. I'm using pink instead of red so that you have enough space to blend on your ink. It does skip a skein of embroidery floss. So I'm moving on to my light yellow, and then it'll skip one again, and I will move on to my blue. Now let's peel off stencil number one and see what this is looking like. This stencil just tickles my heart. It is so adorable. Okay, let's move on to stencil number two. I'll align that. And then you'll use the colors that we missed. So I'll start out with the light orange. And then I'll move on to the light green. And then last will be the light purple. This is such a fun stencil because there are so many color schemes that you can use on this. Okay, there are all of my basic skeins. And then stencil number three is going to add texture or the stripes down the skeins to make it look like string. And so I'm bringing in my dark pink. I'm using a small stencil brush so that I can get into these small spaces. But I'm using all of the dark colors. So here's my dark yellow and my darker green. It's not much darker, but just a little bit so that you can see the strings. Here is the darker blue. And last, the dark purple. And you can really see it coming together after you do this. Now we need to stencil in the little wrappers covering the string or the embroidery floss. And this time I'm going to skip stencil number four, and I'm going right to stencil number five, and I'll show you why in just a minute. But I'm using some dark brown ink for this. It's called Woodsy. And I'm trying to replicate the real wrapper around these embroidery floss skeins. Okay, for stencil number four, I waited for this one because I wanted this portion of the wrapper to be gold. And so I'm using some Slippery When Wet Lunar Paste. This is my favorite color of Lunar Paste and the one that I use the most. They do have a gold Lunar Paste, but this Slippery When Wet Paste just has a warm tone to it that I really love. 
and I'll go over the whole stencil with my palette knife. This does dry pretty fast. I'm just trying to get into these small nooks and crannies here. And then after I think I have it all covered up, I'll use the large scraper tool. And this just helps scrape off the excess ink as well. And I can just put that back into the bottle. So I'll put the lid on first. Then I'm going to pull out a bunch of baby wipes and clean off my tools. I don't have a sink nearby. So it's, it's good to have baby wipes in your craft room and they clean perfectly. So I'll clean off the scraper tool and then the palette knife. And then don't forget about your stencil. So I'm going to peel off the stencil and I'll show you the reveal of this. You peel up the tape. Here is how it turned out. Isn't that beautiful? But I'm going to put a baby wipe underneath it to protect my desk and then a baby wipe on top but let me give you a close-up look at this panel I love the shimmer of that lunar paste and now I'm going to start scrubbing very gently my stencil let's get all of the paste off I'll throw this baby wipe away and get a clean one out even And then I'm going to flip it over and scrub that side as well in case there's any lunar paste on the other side. And then I'll just let those air dry before I put them away. I'll gently peel off the panel and I'll allow this to air dry as well. And then once it's dry, I can start putting together my card. Now here's an example of do as I say and not as I do, because I put this panel down on the card base upside down, or at least it looks upside down to me. To me, the wrapper with the brown oval in the center should be the top. But of course, you can do it any way you'd like. But to me, this looks upside down, but that's all right. It still works out. So I'm adding the happy sentiment to this panel, but I wanted to add more of the slippery when wet paste. I'm also adding this paste to the side of my fishtail sentiment. And this sentiment just says birthday. I added some teal embroidery floss to the other side of the birthday sentiment. And now I can attach this to my card base using more tape runner. So the reason I used the fog gray cardstock instead of white, I just wanted something less stark white. And I knew that it was a pale enough gray that my colors would show up on this cardstock. But I think it looks really cute. Okay, let's attach the sentiment. And I'm going to add a few layers of cardstock underneath this to add some dimension to it. I cut this out for more of the fog gray cardstock because you will see the edges. Now I can put the colored cardstock on top. And then I'm just going to attach this with more liquid glue. And I'll put it in between the wrappers on these embroidery floss skeins. I might be using the wrong term here. I wasn't sure if they were called skeins or is that just for yarn? I'll attach the birthday sentiment with a foam strip. And then I can attach this underneath the happy. I wasn't sure where to put this at first, but I kind of liked it more over to the right. So I'm going to move this. I didn't want to add any more embellishments to this because it's, it's pretty busy. And then you get some nice shine with the lunar paste. I'm going to stamp another sentiment on the inside of this card using the woodsy brown ink again. And again, this one just says stitched for you. And then let me give you a close up look at my last card. I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some fun ideas 
of what you can do with the club kits for April. And if you want to check out any of these supplies, I will have the links provided for you in the description box. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I will have another video using the Better Press of the Month Club coming up really soon. Take care and have a wonderful crafty day. Bye.